Hi everyone, and welcome to Shavlik Patch. My name is Joe Andert, and I'm a technical communicator with Shavlik. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Shavlik Patch to publish updates for third-party applications. So, let's get started. Shavlik Patch consists of two main components. One is the Update Catalog, which contains the detection and deployment logic used to patch non-Microsoft products and legacy Microsoft products. The other component is an add-in to the Configuration Manager Console. The add-in is used to select updates from the catalog, publish them to your WSUS servers, and synchronize with Configuration Manager. The add-in adds two items to the Software Library's Software Updates folder. The Shavlik Patch list item contains all the updates available in the Shavlik Patch catalog. You will use this list to locate and publish updates. New content is automatically downloaded from the catalog each time that Configuration Manager is launched, or at least once a day if your Configuration Manager session remains open for more than a day. If you select an update in the Shavlik Patch grid, detailed information about that update will be displayed in the bottom pane. This Details pane is not available if you select two or more updates. The Shavlik Patch grid contains a number of unique columns that help you identify the status of each update. Let's take a quick look at a few of the columns. The Published column indicates if the update has been published to WSUS. The Published Revision column is incremented each time a revision to that update is published. All published updates will have a number greater than zero. The Revised column indicates if the update is a revision to an update that was previously published. Publishing such an update will create a new revision and will increment the published revision number. The Is Superseded column indicates if the update has been superseded by another update. An update that has been superseded is not the most current. It may only apply to earlier versions of a product, or it may not be as efficient as the update that supersedes it. To view the supersedence chain for an update, select the update and the superseded information is displayed in the bottom pane. For example, for the Adobe Acrobat update that is currently selected, I can verify that it has indeed been superseded, and I can see which updates have superseded it and which updates it supersedes. The Languages column identifies the different language versions that are available for each update. You can sort this column just like any of the other columns. In this example, I have two different versions of the same update, one for Italian and one for French. There are a number of different ways to locate updates that you want to publish. One method is to group the updates by vendor. For this example, let's look at the updates that are available for Audacity. Of the six available updates, four have already been published. Let's try publishing the next available update, Audacity 204. To do this, I simply select the update and then click Publish. Let's go with the default and publish the update right now. If you want to automatically update WSUS with any metadata revisions that are available for updates that have been previously published, enable this checkbox. Because the metadata is only descriptive in nature and the update binaries themselves are never changed, the recommendation is to allow the update. And if you want Configuration Manager to automatically synchronize itself with the WSUS database as part of this task, enable this checkbox. This will cause an incremental synchronization to be performed. If you do not enable this checkbox, the published updates will not be available until your regularly scheduled synchronization process occurs. 
Be sure to provide the credentials needed to add the publishing task to Microsoft Scheduler. You can use either your existing account or a different account. One reason you might choose a different account is if the password for your personal account expires periodically. You have the option to specify, say, a service account whose password does not expire. This option is particularly important when scheduling recurring publishing tasks. When you are finished, click OK. This confirmation message tells me that the publication task was successfully scheduled and that I can use the auto publish log to view the status of the task. I specified that I wanted an incremental synchronization to be performed. And I can see that happening by selecting monitoring and then software update point synchronization. For example, The synchronization process can take several minutes to complete, so I won't wait for it here. But because I published several different Audacity updates prior to this video, and the synchronization for those updates has already occurred, I can demonstrate how they will appear in the All Software Updates section of the software library. These third-party updates can now be deployed using the exact same process used for a Microsoft update. You can view information about each update, and you can use the right-click menu to perform any number of tasks. Let's go back to Shavlik Patch so I can demonstrate how to use the filters and how to schedule a recurring task. For this video, I created one custom filter that searches for updates for Adobe Reader and Google. You can view the filter's configuration by clicking the Edit button. I talk much more about the filtering capabilities in Shavlik Patch in a separate video. You can automatically publish updates on a recurring basis by creating a scheduled task. And you can specify a filter within that task. For example, this scheduled task is configured to run every Sunday at 12 a.m. I can specify which updates to publish by using a filter. Like before, I will automatically update WSUS with any metadata revisions, and I will elect to perform a synchronization each time this task is run. I will also provide the credentials needed to add the publishing task to Microsoft Scheduler. Finally, let me demonstrate how you can expire an update using the Published Third-Party Updates list item. Shavlik Patch enables you to expire third-party updates that have been invalidated by the product vendor or that have been superseded by other updates. Expired software updates cannot be deployed. The updates you set as expired can then be deleted using the WSOS cleanup tool. It is easy to expire one or more updates. You simply select the updates and then click Expire. I will select one of the Audacity updates I've been using as an example and then click Expire. After confirming the action, I can scroll to the right to check out the expired status column. And sure enough, the expiration process has been initiated. Keep in mind that an alternative to expiring an update is to simply delete it using the delete button. The update will be automatically expired as part of the deletion process. For more information about Shavlik Patch, go to the web URL shown here. These two web pages contain additional video tutorials as well as a number of Shavlik Patch user guides. Thanks for watching. Thank you.